When I was 14, I would spend the summer holidays away from school at home. I lived in a small village. This meant I mostly spent the days on my own when my parents worked. I watched TV and played The Sims. My parents were generally out of the house from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. I was raised to never answer the door to strangers. However, where I liked to sit in my living room meant my chair was right next to the window. So I could see the people on the street and they could see me too, I guess. One day I was sitting watching daytime TV when I noticed a man walking down our street. Our street is a dead end and I normally recognize everyone who walks down it but I had certainly never seen him before. He was tall, thin, and unshaven. He was wearing a hooded jumper with the hood up and sleeves rolled up, revealing tattoos on his arm. He was carrying a large duffel bag and looking closely at each house as he passed. As I was sat there watching him, I was clearly in full view of him too. He started to pass our house when I saw him see me. He smiled and turned to come up our short driveway. He came to our front door and knocked. I knew I shouldn't answer the door to someone I didn't know, but he had already seen me. And at 14, I was afraid of being rude to an adult, so I obediently went and opened the door a crack. I peeked around the door and said, Hello? As he spoke, he pulled out his duffel bag from around the front of his body and asked me if my parents were home. At this point, I thought he would probably leave if I said no but instead he stepped towards the door and unzipped the bag. Well, the thing is, I just got out of prison. I want to do the right thing, you know? It's hard to find a job, so I'm trying to sell some things. He started pulling out towels, handkerchiefs, and other junk from the bag. The word prison made my heart skip, and I quickly mumbled something about having no money and closed the door. He stood on the step for a minute, still talking to me about being able to help so I went upstairs and waited for him to leave, which he did. I soon settled back down to watching TV and forgot all about the encounter. At about 5 p.m., my parents came home and took the TV, so I went up to my room. A little while later, there was a knock at the door. I came to the landing and peered down as my mom answered. Two police officers stood on the step. They asked if anyone had called at our house that day. My mom said no one had, and that's when I remembered the visitor from earlier. I came downstairs and said, actually someone had came. Seeing that I was young, the two police officers asked if they could come in and talk to me. They asked me to describe the man I had a conversation with. They seemed really worried and kept telling me not to worry and to just be honest about everything that happened. Once I told them what had happened, they asked to speak to my parents on their own, and then thanked me, and left. After they left, I asked my parents what was going on. My mom explained that a few minutes after the man had left our house, he had gone to another girl's house. She was in the shower and hadn't answered the door when he knocked. Apparently, he let himself into the house and walked upstairs. When he found her in the shower, he sexually assaulted her. With my description and evidence for the girl, they were able to track the guy down. It turns out that he had just been released from prison for a similar attack on another girl. I'm never answering that door when I'm alone now, and I also won't shower when I'm home alone. I live in an apartment on the second floor of a duplex in a small city. The tenants in the unit below have two dogs that will bark at pretty much anything and everything. The other night, about a quarter after midnight, I was laying in bed listening to relaxing music to help me go to sleep when the dogs start barking. My neighbors weren't home at the time and no one was trying to stop them. Through their barking, I could hear voices under my window. I peeked through the curtains just in time to see two males walking across the yard to the sidewalk and up the street away from my place. As they were walking away, I heard one of them say, You gotta be quiet. What if he comes out with a gun? The dog stopped barking after the individuals left the area. 
The city I'm in has always been seen as safer and having lower crime rate than others, but lately it seems to be getting worse. Maybe I'm making a mountain out of an anthill, but it put me on edge. A few years ago, around 11 p.m. on a chilly Thursday in late September, I just finished my Chinese takeout and was relaxing on the sofa watching TV. For some background, I live alone in the second story of a three-family home in a busy New England college town. My landlord was still trying to find tenants for the other two units, so I was the only person living in the building at the time. The building had two stairwells, one main stairwell that led up to all three floors and a side stairwell that only went up to the second floor directly to my apartment. I was about to turn in for the night when I heard footsteps in the main stairwell. This immediately worried me because I always kept the doors accessible to the street locked. Someone had to have broken in. I start to panic as I hear the footsteps moving closer to my front door. I grab my cell phone and run to the side stairwell and dial 911. I give the dispatcher my address and beg them to hurry. I stay on the line with the dispatcher, waiting for the police to get there for what felt like forever, still hiding in the stairwell and praying that whoever was in the house wouldn't find me. As soon as the police arrived, I burst out of the house, crying hysterically. I waited in one of the police cars as they searched the entire house. They found no one. Nothing was stolen. But they discovered that the intruder had entered through a broken window on the first floor. It took me almost a month before I felt safe staying alone in my apartment again. This happened four years back. I was 14 years old and my parents were out and left me and my little sister, 10 at the time, home alone. It was about 10 or 11 when the lights go out. This used to happen sometimes in my country, since it was a new country and really poor. But this time I noticed something out of the ordinary. Only the lights to our house were out and my neighbor's lights were on. I had a bad feeling so I quickly locked the doors and closed the blinds. I told my little sister to hide behind the couch and not to go out no matter what happened. I hid somewhere else with a knife, trying to call my mom, but she didn't pick up. I thought it was over so I'd get out of my hiding place and head to the kitchen so I could look out the window. Before I get close, I hear the doorknob turning. It doesn't work so the person on the other side tries it again, now violently. That's when I panic and shouted, Who the fuck are you? Fuck off my house, I have called the police. I hear footsteps and then nothing. I went into the other room to look out the window and I saw someone running out of my backyard. My sister was crying so I comforted her while we still stayed hidden until my parents came home an hour later. We told them everything and my dad said whoever it was had intentionally cut the house's electricity to scare us. To this day, every time the electricity goes out, I get kind of scared and I'm glad that we were okay. I just recently moved into a decently sized two bedroom house with a full basement where a lot of my family's not so important belongings are still stored in boxes to be sorted through. Our house resides in a quiet neighborhood but our elderly neighbors have advised us that some sketchy figures wander about at night as there's a section of neighborhood two or so blocks away that houses people who had nowhere to go. Fast forward to maybe two weeks ago, I had gone down to the basement to sit through some of the items and noticed a few random things on the table. Toolkit, binders, family pictures, etc. They had been opened and strewn about carelessly. Thinking another family member was sorting as well, I picked them up and went about my task. Over the following week, I would hear strange banging coming from the basement, sort of like our washing machine lid was being shut. Now, I'll admit that I'm skittish and my mind sometimes jumps to the worst possible outcome, so I became worried. 
At the time, I was the only person home, so I grabbed my pepper spray and went to go check. Stupidly, I might add. Our basement has two full rooms plus two adjoining smaller rooms, one of which has a door that I myself had never opened. It was also barred by a beam of some sort, but the door stands slightly ajar. I assume it was just a small storage area. Upon turning on the light, I cautiously looked around. I'd seen that a few more of our belongings and boxes that weren't unpacked yet had been opened and laid on the floor. What concerned me the most was our basement door that leads to the outside was unlocked. That's not something my family would forget about. Further inspecting of the basement proved that no one was inside, though I didn't try to pry open the barred door. Telling my father about this, he said that the noises were probably the heater popping and that perhaps he forgot to lock the side door after taking out the trash. I'm not so convinced of the story, but I really hope I'm not correct in thinking that someone had found their way into our home and has been scavenging through our basement. As of writing this, nothing has happened, but hearing people walk down the street shouting on some nights has me uneasy. I make sure that the doors are locked every night now, and on a free day, I'll have my dad open that barred basement door to put my mind at rest. We'll check back if I find anything out of the ordinary. This happened 16 years ago when I was living in a not so great neighborhood in a not so great 1920s style house. The house, despite being pretty run down, had a really neat design. It had a huge front porch that was screened in and large picture windows on all sides. The front of the house faced the main road through a pretty rough neighborhood, which meant some interesting scenes went down right outside our front door, such as high-speed police chases. During that year or so that we lived on that street, there was a homeless man that would walk down a sidewalk in front of our house. He was over six feet tall with a full head of dreadlocks and wore a large trench coat, even though it was Florida. He was slowly passed in front of a house every few days, dragging a large plastic outdoor trash can, usually muttering to himself. He never really bothered me or made me uneasy as I have a soft spot in my heart for homeless, especially those who seem mentally ill. I was off work one day, home alone, waiting for my boyfriend to get home. It was still in the early evening and daylight outside, so I had the blinds up and some of the windows open. I was at the computer in the living room when I heard the man outside dragging the trash can, talking to himself. By this time, we were familiar with the sounds of the man that I didn't even go to the window to look. It goes away from my mind and an hour passes when I randomly noticed that I never heard him pass our house. As I mentioned, I have become very familiar with the sound of him walking past our house, so when I realized that I hadn't heard him go from one side to the other, I got goosebumps over my entire body. Because of my severe anxiety, I'm basically frozen in my chair at this point. I know that the front blinds are always closed because we usually have a bong on our table, so I can't tell if anyone's in my front yard without getting out of my seat. I slowly stand up and approach the door. I look through the people and in my horror, the man is staring right back at me. He had been standing there staring for an hour. I know this because as soon as he noticed my shadow obscure the people, he starts pounding on the door, pulling on the handle and screaming nonsense at me. I completely panic. I had no idea what this man was capable of, but as a survivor of sexual assault, I tend to immediately fear the worst. As he continued to pound on the door and yell, I ran to my bedroom to get our gun. I go back into the living room, gun loaded and pointed at the door. I scream for him to go away. He continued without any pause, as if he didn't hear me. I repeat myself and added that I had a gun. Literally no change. Finally, I screamed that I had a gun loaded. I was terrified and I would shoot him through the door if he didn't leave. After that, silence. 
I was too scared to check the peephole after our face-to-face -face encounter, so I called 911 and begged them to hurry. They caught up with a guy at the end of the road and drove me down to identify him. The cops were complete jerks to me. Apparently, they knew this guy, as he was a regular trespasser at a local business. I explained the story in detail to the police officers. I was visibly shaken and crying. I explained that I almost shot this man and probably would have killed him. They tell me that he's harmless and that I'm overreacting. Maybe I was overreacting, but I'm not sorry. Would I have been absolutely heartbroken if I would have hurt this man, who obviously is not in the right mind? 100%. Would I have regretted not acting this way if he had gotten through my door? Most likely. Either way, let's not meet again, trash can guy. So I've never posted on the sub, though I have other stories I've buried deep until recently. But this is happening in the present. I have had people stalk and follow me before. And because of that and my true crime addiction, I've become supremely paranoid and a solid curtain twitcher. I'm a 31 year old female. I reside in the upstairs room that was my first room to myself as a child. I had to leave a bad situation and therefore ended up back in my childhood home. For reference, when our house was built, we were told that the field to our left, with horses and a barn at the time, would one day soon be a development. It was 2000 when we were told that, and it wasn't until 2022 that the road started being formed and the foundations laid. I already had someone follow me home before when I was young, but I was in a different bedroom next door. My parents put in a free library that's right below my window and nighttime security lights that were very bright and turn on if you're within 20 feet on the side of the house that my room is on. I'll admit, having an open field next to me for so long made me accustomed to not closing the curtains when I change because there was never anyone to watch. Now there is. For the past two weeks, the motion sensor lights next to the free library have been going off late at night. Because my one side of the curtain is still open, so I can use my vape. That's the only reason I noticed it at all. I didn't think too much of it at first. We lock all our doors and windows every night, and I'm on the second floor. I also always look out the window to see if it was a car, someone walking their dog or a deer, only to see nothing. To add, they put a shitload of streetlights around this area, so the visibility is great. But it just kept happening. So last night I did my usual, and I saw the lights come on out of my peripherals. I acted natural, giving full view out of the window that I was going to bed. It was 3 a.m., Turned the TV off, closed the windows and curtains, turning the lights out. Then I ducked down, peering through the curtains to the sidewalk below. I honestly thought I was going to pass out when after a few minutes, maybe five, someone comes out from the side of my house, all silhouette, dressed in black. They kept their back to me until the light turned off, but I swear I could still see them standing there looking up like they could see me. I called the police, but while I was on the phone with the operator, I saw him run off. There wasn't much the police could do, except say that they'll have a car drive around and look. My parents are asleep and I know I have to tell them tomorrow. This scares the crap out of me. If it hadn't been happening for weeks and was just a solo incident, I probably would be fine about it. But the fact that the lights have been going off without me seeing activity and what happened tonight makes me think that this person has been watching me and watching my house. To the person outside my window, let's please never fucking meet. Small update. I did tell my parents and at first they brushed me off claiming I had a couple of drinks and it was late so I probably just saw someone checking out the library. I then had another conversation about it with my dad, 
who said that there had been reports the last couple weeks of car break-ins and since my car was parked on the side of the street right outside my window, maybe they were trying to break into it. I pointed out that if they were trying to get into my car, why was he pressed up against the house where he wasn't visible from my window and why did he at no point go towards my car? I think I freaked him out enough that we were going to potentially get a camera for that area. Given all of the development happening around us, I think it's smart even without this incident. Thank you all for your advice and replies. I'll update here if anything else happens. In June of this year, I moved out of my parents' apartment as I finally got a steady job and longed for some sort of freedom. I looked for apartments that were affordable in my city and found one that's a two or three minute walk from my parents' apartment. To me, it was perfect. I get to live alone and my parents would still be nearby so I could visit them whenever I wanted or pop in to have breakfast with them. The apartment itself is great. It's not really much to look at, but for a single male, it's more than enough. My apartment has a long corridor connecting each room together from the sides, with the front door being at the start of the corridor. My bedroom is the second room on the left, but since the walls are pretty thin, you can literally hear people outside the apartment complex walking and talking from my bedroom, or any room for that matter. Last week, I came home from the pub after meeting up with a few friends. It wasn't really late, around 10.15, 10.30ish, and I had the day off, so I took a shower and hopped into bed to watch Netflix. It was probably around midnight when I heard a faint knock coming from the front door. I stopped the show that I was watching and listened for a minute or so, and just thought that it was my mind playing tricks on me. I continued watching Netflix when once again I heard a two motion knock on my door. I sat up from bed and went to the door, looked through the peephole, and sure enough it was pitch black. Once again I shrugged it off and went back to my room, but before I could even sit down properly, I heard a slightly louder set of knocks. At this point, I thought my friends were playing a prank on me, so I called my friend and asked him if he was knocking on my door and if he was, it wasn't amusing. He paused for a second and said, Dude, I'm home. I have to be up at like 7.30. I believed him and hung up the phone. I was talking pretty loudly, so whoever was knocking probably heard me, and as soon as I hung up, I heard another knock. At this point, I was pretty pissed off, so I walked to the door, looked through the people, and saw nothing. I then unlocked the door to take a peek, and closed the door and locked it. Me being angry and a bit intoxicated, I decided to wait to catch whoever was knocking. So I spent a solid 10 minutes slightly looking through the peephole before being a bit startled as someone put their hand over the peephole and knocked again. I immediately started unlocking the door and ran out into the apartment hall. I heard someone booking it down the steps and heard him lean against the wall as his jacket shrugged the wall. So I ran a few steps down before realizing whoever it was was waiting behind the corner to get the jump on me. I hurried back inside and called the cops. They were there within a few minutes and scanned the building and the street but couldn't find anyone. They told me it could have just been a kid playing a prank and to never run after someone. They kept a patrol car around the entire night, and the knocking stopped. It could have just been some kids being dumb, but the part that gave me the creeps was the fact that whoever it was ran down the stairs and stopped behind the corner. He didn't keep running. If it was some pranksters, I'd find it more likely that they would have just booked it outside. As I said, it's been a week and the knocking stopped. It kept me on edge for a few nights because I expected to be jumped by someone when walking to my apartment, but nothing so far has come of it. I've let it go and just hope it won't happen again. So this happened when I was 15 and my little sister was 12. Little backstory here. 
We lived in a small town for several years and it was safe. A few years into living there, we had a cop with his wife and two kids move into a house two doors down from us. Our house was built sometime in the 1920s. A few nights before this incident, our other sibling locked us out of the back door. Us being idiots, we kicked the back door in. The door didn't budge but the frame came out of the wall and the door was just hanging. One of our blinds were broken. We didn't have the money to fix it, seeing as my parents had eight kids and money was tight growing up. Anyway, the blinds were broken behind our TV. On the other side of the window was a garage and our driveway. Next to the driveway was our neighbor's property, which was abandoned and had tall shrubs. What we didn't know was two people had been hiding in the shrubs watching us. My little sister's name is Candace. It was the summer of 2009. My oldest brother and his girlfriend were a mile from our house fishing at about 10 p.m. at night. All of our siblings and parents were asleep. I was sitting on the couch watching TV. Candace was sitting on the bed watching TV with me too. All of a sudden, Candace and I heard a very loud crash noise from the back door. We both screamed. We got up, ran to the phone, and called my brother's cell phone. He said that he was on his way because his girlfriend twisted her ankle. He gets home. By this point, we woke up everyone in the house and had all the lights on. My brother tells us to stay in the house. My brother is six foot four, 300 pounds. Unknown to my family, I had slipped outside to check with my brother. I know it was stupid for me to do, but I was a curious kid. I saw my brother being really quiet. He ran back to our fenced-in backyard. He gets within arm's reach of this guy and steps on a stick. The guy turns and looks back at my brother and takes off running and hops the fence to get away, sadly. I didn't see this because I went back into the house after a while. My brother comes in. He tells everyone that he saw a guy in all black and he's about six foot. That is all he saw. The rest of the night was calm. My brother on high alert. The next night my brother was out with his girlfriend. It was again 10 at night. Candace and I were watching TV again in the same spot as last time. Again, we heard a loud crash coming from our back door. We screamed and called our brother's cell phone. He came home again. The whole house was awake again with all the lights on. My brother goes out and checks it out. This time, we didn't see anyone out there. Forgot to mention both of these times, we looked out the back door. Both times, the back door looked like it had been kicked really hard. This time, around the frame was out of the wall more. The door was leaning further into the house. We didn't make a police report because we had a cop that lived two houses down from us. While he was at work, us kids would take care of his pregnant wife, bring her over food, play with her kids. We didn't really see him much, and when we did, he was so sweet and nice. But anyways, we told a police officer about what happened. He told us that he thinks it was two guys, that they had been stalking our house and watching us. The cop comes over and checks and looks. He said, I believe that there's two guys. One was a lookout and hides right here in the shrubs. He keeps lookout while the other one does the possible breaking in. He said that they had to have been looking through the blinds since they were broken. At night, you could look in and you couldn't see anything if you looked out. After those two nights, there were no more attempted break-ins. Fast forward to fall of that year. Our cop neighbor told us this. I'm not supposed to tell you this, but we caught a peeping Tom. He's in jail now, about 20 or so miles away. He said that after the peeping Tom got caught, it all stopped. That the town was safe again, because it was. Candace and I were so freaked out and scared. To this day, her and I have to check all the doors and windows to ensure that they're locked. 
We check multiple times a day. If any of our curtains are open, we get scared. We close the curtains every time. I'm honestly afraid that it will happen again. We no longer live in that town, but that thought is still there. To this day, we don't know what their intentions were. I think if he would have gotten in, we wouldn't be here today. This is all scary. Years ago, when I was pregnant, we were just getting ready for bed, and it was late, about 1.30 a.m. This woman knocked on the door, and my husband answered. She was clearly high and jittery, and looking all around everywhere. She asked if she could use the toilet. My husband said no, this is not a public restroom. We both got a really bad vibe off her. She was quite a big woman, and clearly something wasn't right with her. She started to try to open our security door, rattling the handle, but we have always been very cautious about keeping it locked the minute we walk in. My husband told her no to go away and shut the door. She started to bang on the door, screaming that she needed to use the toilet. My husband opened the door and told her to piss off or he was calling the cops. She stopped, froze, and for about 20 seconds stood there staring at us and then she turned around and walked away. We turned off all the lights and looked through the blinds and saw her next door talking to two people. I said to my husband that that was a setup for a home invasion and he agreed. The thing is, I've actually seen this woman around a few times, so she could have known that I was heavily pregnant and that would make us good targets because we would have been compliant. People have a tendency to be more compliant when they're trying to protect their family. I reckon that she followed me home. I never saw her again. I'm not sure if I'm overreacting a little, but this was very creepy. This morning at about 3 a.m., my roommate and I, both young women, watched the man park at the end of our driveway and come up to our door. He was shining a flashlight around, looking up and down and all around the door. He walked over to the neighboring house and got back in his car and drove away. We were absolutely terrified and I'm trying to find any reasonable explanation other than potential robbery or something worse. I believe he saw our security cameras and that's why he left but I'm scared that he was scoping it out and is going to come back. Just a strange encounter at a strange hour. This happened around 2021 in India, around COVID period where lockdowns were still very effective. My dad used to live in another city. My brother was in college and my mom had got a government job so she had to go to her office every day. So I was basically left alone from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. We used to live in an apartment unit, but it had two doors. One was the main door, and the other one was located in the biggest room, basically my parents' room. The door was clearly locked with an actual lock from the outside, and it also had a metal sliding door. We had a ring doorbell on the outside, but it was just connected to a small bulb in the bedroom. So one day around 12 p.m., I was in my room, which was basically adjacent to my parents' room. I felt weird, I don't know. So I went to go check their room. I went to the room and saw the ball blinking, meaning someone was ringing the doorbell. My mom said to ignore it, because if it was someone we knew, they would know the real door. I stood there for a moment when the person started knocking really hard on the door like it was straight up rattling. But the thing was, due to the metal gate in the front, it would be very hard to put your hand inside to knock on the actual door. I was a teen back then, and even I couldn't put half a palm, and this man was straight up banging on it. I got scared and called my mom, who told me not to panic. But I was really weirded out, so I locked my bedroom door with the lock they had, and went downstairs to chill in my brother's room. 
It was one of those days where my mom straight up wouldn't return until 8 p.m. So I was alone for a long time and I was scared to even go upstairs. Around 6 p.m. our helper Annie came and I was a little better seeing that someone else was in the house. During that time I used to have a private tutor and my teacher would come around 7.30 so I felt better knowing that people would be in the house. Our main door had a big window just beside it. So whenever someone was at the door, we used to open the blinds to check who it was before opening it. But Auntie had the habit of opening it without checking. Fortunately, that day, when the doorbell rang, she opened the blinds and then she came to my brother's room to tell me that we had a cake delivery. Thing was, we didn't, obviously. So when I went to check through the window, there was a man with a cap hiding his face holding a very small box. Now, a cake box is very square and big, right? Even a pound cake has a big ass box. And in India, we have very small sweet boxes. So imagine a 100 gram sweet box being called a cake box. I asked him who the delivery was for. He didn't give me a name, not even the company. He just told us it was for our flat. I called my mom and asked if she had ordered it. And she didn't know what I was talking about. So the dude was just like, accept the box, open the door, and by a miracle, my teacher walked up the stairs and asked what was going on. The dude saw my teacher and ran away, and we let our teacher enter. Later, when my mom inquired about a delivery coming to our flat with our security guard, he said he wasn't there at his post for about a half hour. The same time period that this happened, and we didn't have any CCTV in our building, so no one saw him. It wasn't that scary maybe, but it did shake me up and I asked my mom to at least come quickly from her office on the next day and I didn't stay upstairs when I was home alone. This happened seven or eight years ago. My girlfriend and I live two hours apart and whenever I can, I try to stay at her place on the weekends. She rents a two-story apartment one particular Sunday though, when she went out to do an errand, I suddenly got the urge to go up to her second floor balcony after making coffee. I got spooked by a man in a tree outside my girl's apartment. Mind you that this tree is kinda high that if you jump hard enough, you can get to the second floor balcony, no problem. The look in his face said that he wasn't expecting someone to be home. Maybe he was monitoring the house and tried to break in when he saw my girl leave. Anyway, I stared at him for a good minute while he was trying to play it cool and sell that he was just randomly climbing a tree on a random day. I reported that shit to the cops as soon as he got off the tree. They caught him a few hours later with stolen valuables from nearby houses. This happened quite a few years ago, back when my family lived right behind Albertsons, when it was still open in Napa, California. I was in middle school at the time, 23 years old now. It was late at night, and I was fast asleep as it was a school night. I heard screaming and woke up and immediately rushed out of the room. My sister was closing her sliding glass door that had a broken handle inside. It was really difficult to open and close because of the rust also pretty noisy. My sister had been sleeping in the recliner in the family room that night. She was in a major panic, closing the sliding door that led to the backyard when I rushed to that room. She had just told me that a man broke in. As luck would have it, we accidentally left that door unlocked that night. We both went up to my parents and explained what happened. They called the police, which ended up showing up 10 to 15 minutes later. That's when my sister explained to them what had occurred. When the man was opening the sliding glass door, she was woken up. She was groggy at the time and figured it was my dad just letting out our cat. The recliner faced away from the glass sliding door, facing the TV. But as she was becoming more awake and aware, she realized it wasn't my dad, but a man in a black outfit with a black ski mask on. She started to scream as he groped around her body his hands moving up and down her body. 
That's when I came in. As soon as he heard the beads that hung from my bedroom door, he immediately ran out the open sliding glass door. It had scared my family greatly, especially my sister. She has been traumatized since then. Over the coming weeks, we eventually found out that there had been a series of break-ins around our neighborhood. All reports of women finding men in their room, going through their underwear drawers, and one report where a man was saying very lewd things to a woman that had woken up to find him in her room. Ever since then, we have been mindful of locking all the doors and to check them and make sure that they're all locked. <laughs>